Hello, my name is Ashley Perkins and I am a digital marketing specialist with Liquid Grow. I'm here with Liquid Grow's very own agronomy research lead, Jake Bossenkemper. Today, Jake's here to talk with us about one of the four R's of nutrient stewardship. Uh, the four R's of nutrient stewardship um, are making sure that we get fertilizer and uh, manure nutrients uh, applied at the right rate, in the right place, uh, using the right source, and at the right time. All right, so why should um, farmers be concerned with the four R's? Well, if farmers follow the principle of the four R's, it's gonna ensure a couple things. Number one, it's going to ensure that farmers have a good return on their fertilizer or manure investments. Because if they're following those principles, that likely means they're gonna have a high nutrient use efficiency. The second reason why farmers should be interested in uh, following the four R's in nutrient stewardship are that if a lot of the fertilizer nutrients are making it into the plant, then that means uh, those, those fertilizer or manure nutrients, frankly, are not making it into unintended places. And if they're not making it into unintended places, they're likely not causing any environmental harm. All right, Jake, so what are some of the practices that growers can implement to achieve uh, nutrient use efficiency and keep fertilizer nutrients from leaving their fields. Yeah, actually there are many, many different practices growers can consider implementing to, uh, to achieve higher nutrient use efficiency and to keep fertilizer nutrients from leaving their fields. Um, some of these practices would uh, give farmers an immediate economic return. And some of these practices may not give farmers an immediate economic return, but they surely would help keep nutrients from leaving their fields, okay? So we'll start with uh, some practices that uh, may not give farmers an immediate econ economic return, but would uh, keep nutrients from leaving the field. Okay, those practices would include cover crops, for example. Uh, they could include subsurface placement of phosphorus fertilizer, and they may include edge of field strategies like buffer strips or bioreactors. So those are some examples of some practices that growers could uh, implement to uh, keep, keep nutrients from leaving the field. Other practices that growers could implement that would achieve uh, the goal of, of keeping fertilizer nutrients uh, within their fields, as well as an immediate return on investment, uh, would include uh, switching from fall to spring nitrogen sources. Uh, they might include using soil nitrate tests to determine side dress and nitrogen rate recommendations for corn. And they also might include using science-based uh, nitrification inhibitors, uh, and, and a couple of those would be instinct too. Uh, and um, insert. All right, so that is a lot of information to swallow all at once. Yeah, it, it is actually, um, but that's why we're going to focus in now on one of the four R's, and we're going to focus in on the right time, okay? The right time to apply the bulk of your nitrogen fertilizer corn really is either just prior to planting or in season, all right, as opposed to making uh, a large fall nitrogen applications. By applying most of your nitrogen either uh, just prior to planting or in season, growers are going to find they're, that they're going to have higher yields. Um, and you're also going to be keeping that nitrate um, either in their crops or in their fields. Um, so you're going to be simultaneously increasing crop yields uh, along with increasing nitrogen use efficiency. Um, and you're going to be keeping that nit nitrogen out of the atmosphere where it can cause, where it can, where it can cause global warming. Um, and you're going to be keeping the nitrate out of North America's waterways. All right, well, that sounds too good to be true. So how can you be so confident that making these adjustments will increase, increase profitability? Uh, my, my personal experience as an agronomist doing research have told me that by applying nitrogen um, in the spring versus the fall, uh, corn yields are often higher. Um, you know, I can also be confident about, uh, about the facts that uh, corn yields will be higher in the spring versus fall um, in applications because there are uh, many examples of academic studies that have been done throughout the, throughout the years that have shown that, uh, you know, uh, spring in applications um, are, are, a, are a profitable practice for farmers versus applying most green in the fall, okay? So I'll give you three examples of such studies uh, conducted in uh, the upper Midwest, okay? So there was a study conducted uh, by uh, Wessel and Bilo um, for three seasons at a total of 10 locations in Northern Illinois in the late um, 1990s, all right? So they applied nitrogen in either the spring or the fall at uh, many different end rates. 
And they found on average that um, by applying in in the spring versus in the fall, corn yields were increased by 9.7% in their studies. All right. So that was a rather, rather large uh, yield increase. Um, another study uh, was conducted for five years uh, in Waseca, Minnesota by the University of Minnesota. And in those studies, they found that uh, by applying nitrogen sources in the, in the spring versus the fall, corn yields were increased by about 8%. All right. um, a, a more recent study um, conducted by Iowa State University uh, for three seasons from 2007 to 2009 found that corn yields were increased by 6% if nitrogen was applied in the spring uh, as opposed to applied in the fall. So not only can farmers expect higher uh, returns from higher yields, but they might also expect higher returns from frankly using a little less nitrogen fertilizer. So I, I think this would be a good time to take an even closer look at this concept. So Ashley, we just discussed how um, using, by applying your nitrogen uh, in the spring versus the fall, we just discussed how that can not only increase corn yields, but you can achieve higher corn yield using less nitrogen fertilizer, correct? Yeah. Okay, so this is a, this figure one here that uh, we're going to discuss here for just a second. This is a real world um, example of, of just that, okay? And this figure comes from that Iowa State study that I referenced earlier, okay? Right. So here you have nitrogen rate on the excess axis here, and you have yield on the y-axis. Okay, and in this in this study, they found that this is the fall applied uh, nitrogen here, the, the hashed line. And you can see here that the economic optimum nitrogen rate wasn't achieved until you applied uh, 200 pounds of nitrogen fertilizer, and that was in the fall. Okay, but for the side dress, so the pre-plant nitrogen application, you can see here that higher yields were achieved using, in this case, only 147 pounds of nitrogen fertilizer. So this is a real example of not only higher yields from applying your nitrogen in the spring, uh, but also achieving those higher yields by using less nitrogen. Okay, All wow. Right? So you can use, you could use, if, if you use this exact data set up here in this calculator that I built, um, I built this calculator so farmers and, and other agronomists could can plug in their own scenarios regarding uh, the price of corn, uh, the cost for your fertilizer, and uh, you know what what difference in yield you might expect for fall versus spring applied nitrogen. You know you can you can plug those factors into this calculator, and it'll basically give you the net profit to uh, choosing those those practices. Okay, so if you, if you use the the example that we just discussed there from the Iowa State study, uh, in this case you know our nitrogen source we're going to use UAN 32 percent. So we'll, we'll, we'll assume here, well, well from, from that study, they found that 147 pounds was the economic optimum nitrogen rate. They found that 200 pounds of N per acre was the economic optimum nitrogen rate in the fall. Okay, and you can see here that the price of UAN in this example is 30 cents, and the price of anhydrous here is uh, 23 cents. You know, that's a common price spread between those two sources of nitrogen. Uh, you can adjust the application cost here if you'd like. Um, we'll leave those at $12 each for now, but you can, you can adjust those if you want for the application costs. Uh, you can plug in the price you're going to receive for your corn uh, there. You can plug in the percent yield increase uh, you might expect from applying in, in, the, in the spring versus the fall. Okay, And that 6% there, that, I'm, uh, that came from that Iowa State uh, study here that we just discussed. Um, so this would be uh, this would be the six percent yield increase, and then you get your, your you have your gross and your net profit, and that that calculates that calculates a total net profit for for choosing uh, for these practices here that we discussed. Okay, and in this case, the spring applied nitrogen uh, came out uh, being approximately forty three dollars uh, more profitable than than applying nitrogen in the fall. I might add, despite a little higher nitrogen cost in the spring. Okay. All right, so you know, I, I guess I, I guess I'm a little bit biased, but um, I found it pretty difficult to come up with a scenario where um, spring applied nitrogen doesn't uh, increase net profits more than applying nitrogen in the fall. All right, but but feel free to put in whatever numbers you'd like to put in, Ashley. All right, <laughs> and uh, you can come up with your own scenario. Okay. That's awesome. 
So, so actually, I'm going to place that Excel file um, as well as the three different uh, research papers I referenced uh, on our website um, under the Jake's Farm Bureau section. So that way, farmers and others who are interested can 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 read those publications for themselves if they choose if they choose to, but also so they can plug their own metrics uh, into that uh, calculator um, and decide for themselves if uh, switching from fall to spring apply nitrogen is the, the best decision for them. So one last question, um, are there any advantages to applying the sources of nitrogen in the fall? So back to your, is this too good to be true comment from earlier. <laughs> and in fact, you, there are some legitimate advantages to applying nitrogen in the fall versus the spring. By applying some nitrogen in the fall, historically that's really helped farmers and frankly the entire ag, ag industry stretch out their workload. Uh, because we just physically uh, have more time uh, in the fall uh, than we often do in the spring. Ag retailers and farmers are very busy in the springtime. This is where we get to put in the plug for Liquid Grow. So at Liquid Grow, uh, we can apply many acres rapidly because we apply um, UAN with floaters, so we can cover lots of acres rapidly. We surface ban that UAN um, to reduce the chance for a tie up with residue or ammonia volatilization. And uh, farmers can, be, we can apply that before they do tillage, which further decreases any chance for ammonia volatilization. So uh, we can get a lot of acres applied uh, fairly quickly. Um, and if farmers are interested in making the switch from fall to spring applied sources of nitrogen, uh, we'd be happy to help them make that switch.